Welcome everybody to Spirit Matters. My name is Dayal Garunga and I'm here with Kishore Chandra, Achyuta Gopi, Radha Govinda, Radha Mulidhar, all the assembled Vaishnavas, our live studio audience, Rini Jacob, who just joined us live in the audience, and all of you listeners out there, thank you so much for being with us. Um, this is our daily morning dose of Sangha and spirituality, where we put everything on the table and discuss spiritual matters as they apply to our lives or as we integrate them through our own um, experience of life and, and try to bring a genuine feel towards our spiritual practices. And before we launch into it, I'm going to start announcing this more and more. Kishore Chandra and I are leading a Kirtan training in Mexico, Mex on the West Coast, the Pacific side of Mexico, which I've never been to. I've been to the Pacific side in California, which is where I'm from. And so, um, but it's a week long Kirtan training, the first week of April, April 2nd to 8th or 9th, something like 9th. that. So Kirt, eight day immersive Kirtan training. If you want to come and learn and be in Kirtan with us for a week, um, you'll learn how to play the harmonium, how to play kartals, how to sing, the meaning of mantra, the meaning of Kirtan, be in Sangha, three vegetarian meals cooked for you each day, um, accommodations taken care of, time in the beach. Kishore Chandra's got all kinds of vocal and movement exercises. You'll be howling and moaning in the sands of Mexico. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun. And we're going to be telling you about that more and more because we really, really would love you guys to come, whoever can make it. Just come to BhaktiCenter.org and you'll get all the info on our website. Um, that's my morning plug. And uh, moving on to you guys, how are you doing? Kishore and Achuta. I'm doing good. I'm having an interesting time because after after India, I was like really listening to my body, right? I was like listening to my body and just like letting myself sleep. And that was really good. But for the past few days, I think I've been listening to my body a little too much. <laughs> I'm just like, wait a minute, I might have crossed the threshold. And now I'm like <laughs> sleeping 11 hours every night because I just don't sleep with an alarm. And I'm like, does my body know what it's doing? I don't like this is strange. This is not normal. So I might have to set an alarm. <laughs> the body's like, oh man, we can get away with all kinds. He's lit. Hey guys, he's listening. Hey, <laughs> we got his ear. Let's do this. Let's kick this into gear. Any requests? Anybody got your requests? Come on, get your requests. He's taking requests. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good to see you wrapped up in a blanket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the title of today's episode. Listen to your body to a extent to an extent Achuta, how you doing how many hours did you sleep last night i i'm okay um except for like i think i'm the opposite of, of kishore right now it's like tired all day mm. literally all day and then you're like okay now's the moment i get to go to sleep and then my body's like no we're not tired it's fine yeah we'll deal yeah, you have a kid. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, even even she was tired yesterday. Like, yeah, <clears throat> everybody went to bed yeah. early. Like, she went to bed. It was great. I was like, okay, here I go. Yeah, what well, so I'm saying, you 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 have a, a much added responsibility than than either of us that to, to to keep you tired and working hard. My uh -oh. although my dog did wake me up at four o'clock this morning to. He's been go. He wakes up in the middle of the night and he needs to go to the bathroom. He scratches at the door when he needs to go out, which is nice. He doesn't. He doesn't. You know, do it inside. Um, and so it's like, really? Okay, fine. Whatever. I gotta get up. And then I just ended up staying up. So I've been up for a little. I've Pasha's cat woke her up at four a.m. So I've been up for a little while today. I got some good stuff done. I, I chanted. I've been working on a on a on a on a course that I'm doing, and um, so I'm get, I'm getting there. Getting there. That's that's Vaishnav Seva. He woke you up, made you look like a pure devotee. He, that's a good kid. He's a great kid. Very spoiled. Um, pet pet alarms. Yes. Um, where we left off yesterday, we walked in. Yesterday, we we ended on this place of we ended somewhere. And I remember at the end of yesterday's episode, I was like, Oh my god, I know exactly what I want to talk about. And then we got in this morning. I was like, what did we talk about yesterday? And I was like lost. And I was like, and I was thinking of this last night. I was like, I said, I knew where I wanted to start this morning, but where did we leave off? And I had to pull up Kimberly's notes here. She left such good notes. And then Achuta came on and, and reminded me 
um i remember what what did you say when we got off you lead us off where we've ended yesterday at chuta uh we were talking about different boxes and labels and uh i was saying that maybe those boxes are only there for a certain amount of time yes and they're supposed to be flexible and moving along with the rhythm of life so but then yes. we put so much importance on those boxes being there for perpetuity yes and it's like if somebody changes their box or makes adjustments to their identity then somehow all of a sudden it starts affecting our authenticity yes okay i got something i want to say on that do either of you guys want to say something first before i just Go launch <laughs> um what was what i was thinking about was um the roles that we play and oftentimes we all have a role that we're seeking to play for ourselves and we assign roles to other people without their consent and the frustrations we experience so often in relationships is you're not playing the role that i've assigned to you and then i'm not playing the role that you've assigned to me and neither of us are playing the role that somebody else has assigned to us. And it just gets so kind of convoluted and confusing. And we don't even realize the roles that we're assigning to other people sometimes. And there's this sense of, of we're all the star performer in our own movie. We're all playing the movie of our own lives. And we think we're the center. We have put ourselves in the lead role of our own lives and we're trying to get other people to play the supporting actors. And Krishna consciousness or spirituality, we talk about, I mean, the bhakti center, it's about what am I putting in the center? And when we all approach life with our own viewpoints of the center, when we're the center, then there's this clashing of, of roles that we play because I can't be the star of my life and like you like those roles don't fit together but a spiritual community is that place where we agree on a common center that's not me and we put that supreme divinity in the center of which we all uh not what is it hover exist orbit around and that is the nature of the soul the dharma of the soul is to serve and so when we're trying to put ourselves in the center it clashes because we're trying to therefore pin other people in unnatural roles around me that just kind of clash. So anyways, I was, I was thinking of that sounded really profound when I was thinking of it yesterday. Um, and that's how I was thinking, cause I was thinking about what we put in the center of our lives and whether it's a family or an organization or a circle of friends or a spiritual community, it's really when we agree on a common center, that's not me. Everyone's trying to put themselves in the center and recognizing how do I support the center? How do I serve the center rather than try to be in the center? All right, tell me how much of that made sense. That, that made sense. It made a lot of sense. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'll, just, I'll just say to that that I think it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely the ideal putting Krishna in the center, the Bhakti center. And uh, we're trying to live our lives like that. Go for it, Dial. Good for um, you. I, I wish you well in that endeavor. <laughs> and I think, I think so. Uh, at least for me, something very interesting has been, and I'm sure you have a lot to say about this, Achuta, as well. But I think like relationship and, and family and, and moving out of kind of just like singular existence. I think one of the biggest challenges for me was moving out of the ashram and just being alone, you know, and not having a relationship and just like being completely on my own. And it's like, I went from like, Krishna's at the center all the time. And this is how I'm living my life in the ashram. And I'm sure you have a lot to say about this Dayal as well. And then I kind of was just like, okay, I'm still trying to put Krishna in the center, but I'm no longer like physically living in this way where we're putting Krishna in the center. And I, I learned all these things, but you know, I'm in Maya, I'm out here now. I'm listening and to my body now, sleeping 11 I'm listening hours to my at body a time. Now. <laughs> I'm sleeping 12 hours, no alarms. <laughs> but I think one of the, the most uh, valuable parts of being in a, in a, in a relationship, and it was, it was very important for me. I remember I went through a lot of trial and tribulation because it was very important for me 
to find another devotee to be in a relationship with. And I'm not saying that that's the only way, like, I don't believe that. I just knew that for me, in my um, fallen situation where it was very difficult for me to put Krishna at the center and I'm like sleeping 13 hours a night, I was like, I need someone to help me um, keep doing this because I think it's so hard to do actually, especially when you're on your own. And that has been such a learning experience for me to be able to say, okay, this is, this is, this is the basis. This is the foundation of the relationship. And when stuff starts to go wrong, like, let's just go back to this like basic understanding that we have. And I feel like it really shifts things because even in conflicts or even in challenges, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are we doing this in the first place? Or like, what are we arguing about in the first place? Or like, what was our goal in the first place? And it's like, oh yeah, that's right. Our goal was to put Krishna at the center. And so like, are we doing that? Is that happening? And that's been very helpful for me because as a barometer, it's always good to go back to that because I think just, just in daily life, we were talking about boxes and identities and labels and all of this stuff. I think one, we, like you were saying, Doyal, it's like we're living our life in this way where it's like we're the star of our own show. And even more so than just like we, I think that begs the question of like, what do I mean by, what do I mean by me? What do I mean by like, I'm the star of my own show? And I really think it's these identities or these ideologies that we're subscribing to that we're like really, really like concretely like, no, I am this, you know, whatever, like Latin person. And this is everything that revolves around me is focused on this identity or whatever X, Y, Z identity. It might not be one, it might be a few, but it's really contingent on these like things that we've had to build up over life for many reasons. But I think that becomes really detrimental at a certain point because it leaves very little room for like grace and divinity to come in because i'm just like i have control this is the identity this is how it's supposed to be this is the role this is how i interact with the world the end you know like i'll, I'll end with this one of an interesting i i think i brought this up last week but something very interesting for me was just like kind of like realizing that i have this like new york i i guess i always knew that i'm from new york but when you meet someone who's not from New York, especially someone who's like very, like the culture is very different. I'm just like, this is how we talk. Like this is New York, like whatever, you know? Like, and it's like, it's very rude. I'm like, no, we're not rude. We're just from New York, you know? And it's like, oh, okay. Like I'm understanding that this is something that it's, it's I've kind of concretized as like, this is my personality or this is who I am. And it's like, wait a minute, just that shift, like you were saying, Dayal, of putting Krishna in the center, it really starts to challenge how I even look at myself and my quote unquote personality. And so I'm going to stop there because I could just keep on going and going and going. And I want to hear from Achute because I mentioned a lot of things. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it was actually, it was really perfect. And um, I had a, I had a friend once and we we were friends and then they they moved to new york and to as far as i knew things were going fine um and then all of a sudden one day i get like an email really long email i'm like uh oh what i do now um, mm -hmm. and and they were just so upset and they were writing and writing and writing. And they're like, you know, when I moved to New York, I expected that we were going to hang out and like go to movies and like do all this stuff. And, mm -hmm. and, and we were going to like, we were, we were friends and I had this, we were going to be best friends and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't act nicely. And I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. over, over and above acting nicely to you me acting nicely was doing whatever you thought I should do mm. that I didn't even know about because you didn't tell me. Like, exactly. it, it's so important to to really communicate one because nobody's a mind reader. Um, and two, because we're operating, like you said, Doyle, as the star of our own shows. And we're now inserting people as supporting actors and, and supporting roles. And we don't even tell them. So yeah, nope. my actions might have been a lot more different had they actually spoken to me and said, hey, these are my expectations and hopes and desires. And it, it brings me all the way back to Bhagavad Gita where Krishna is saying it is lust only Arjuna, which compels a living entity to, to act as if, as if by force. 
Um, and when we think about it, you know, we even tend to like, okay, lust, cool, done. It's all sexual. It's like, no, what are those desires that you have hmm. that are even unspoken? Because from contemplating those desires and the objects of desires, we get attached to those desires. And when those desires go unfulfilled, then there becomes this like red hot attachment to those desires. I want them more now because they're completely unfulfilled. And yeah. then the more that that happens and the more that we don't get them fulfilled, then of course it's, it's Bhagavad Gita 101, then anger develops, right? And we can't even remember what was what about all of these relationships. So yeah, um, even when we have those expectations and desires, when we have those desires for our lives and seeing somebody in a certain role helps us feel more comfortable about our lives or seeing somebody in a certain role helps us feel more soothed or, or safe about our lives, then they do something that's out of character. But how can I tell you what's out of character? How can I tell you what's inauthentic? All I can do is, is look at the, the trajectory that you've chosen and then say, well, from an outside point of view, this seems a little bit different than what you've already done. Mm. But I can't tell you what's inauthentic or out of character or all of these things unless I've really paid attention to you and not me. Um, so yeah, it, it is a great practice in being more mindful, being more conscious. And that's what we're trying to do is be more spiritually conscious, which helps with putting Krishna in the center, but we do it with Krishna. Krishna, you were supposed to fulfill all my desires this way. You were supposed to answer all my prayers in this way. And then when it doesn't happen, we start telling, oh, well, Krishna, you can't really be God, or you're not really there for me, or you're not really, or this or that. But it's because we are focused once again on our desires and our desires only. Hmm. I read yesterday uh, when you were speaking, it made me think that uh, when people call you selfish, what they're really upset about is that you're not putting their needs before your own. And so this, like, when we get upset at people for being, you're being so selfish, means you're not considering my needs. You're not putting my needs above your own. And I think that when you were talking about lust in the Gita, um, it really brought it home for me in a way that each of us, it's not only like, okay, I'm the star in my life and you're the supporting actor, but it's like, I actually have a mission I'm trying to fulfill. I have a vision I'm trying to carry out in my life. I have ambitions and desires. And I don't mean like ambitions, like I'm trying to become famous or I'm trying to become wealthy, there's that, but like I have a yearning for fulfillment that I think is gonna be fulfilled in a certain way. And I'm, and I'm sort of like, recruiting people to get on board to find my hidden treasure. You know, I want my life, I think my life needs to have a family in a certain way, or I need, I have certain emotional or internal, it's, we do this with we, people, classic examples, parents do this with their kids. I have this sort of life that I wanna live and feeling, and like now you guys are, the, you're supposed to like fulfill my need to be X, Y, and Z, whatever it may be. Or we do it with our partners. I have a need to be a certain way and I, I need you to be that kind of partner because it fills that need in me or my friends or my, whatever it may be. And it's actually like we're just yearning to like satisfy this avaricious lust in the heart. And you're saying not like this sexual lust, but just like this, like this, as Christian says, burns like fire and never satiated. And it's just like, I'm realizing like, rather than than admitting the jig is up and i need to change the way i craft my desires and what i'm reaching for i just keep pulling people into it and thinking now it's your fault you didn't show up for me the way that i needed you didn't do x y or z for me and that's why things aren't working out as opposed to like no it's not supposed to work out where I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not, rather than I'm look, rather than I'm looking in the wrong place, it's like people aren't doing their part in helping me fulfill whatever I'm trying to get. And uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry for all the times I did that to you. You guys have just been, you guys have just been my pawns and my scheme for fulfillment. I'm sorry. That's what this whole podcast is. This whole podcast was a need for me to, to be something and I pulled you guys into it. Sorry. Asha says Dial's confessions. <laughs> Dial's confessions. 
That was the last no. time we. That was the last time we saw Daya. <laughs> um, I I really like this point that you both are bringing up about desires and the fulfillment of our desires, and specifically the fulfillment of our material desires. And I think that I think what gets, I think what's really good to acknowledge is that we're kind of taught in the spiritual practice or in bhakti that the fulfillment of those material desires is simply not enough, right? Um, that they're never going to like make us feel whole. However, they might be important. Like, of course, like there are certain material desires, like we're, we've been talking about swadharma and swabhava, like the nature of our bodies, the nature of our dharma. It's certainly uh, important to, to have some sort of stability in that material sense, but that they're never going to fulfill us completely and that therefore you know we've heard this we must experience a higher taste we must kind of um, move into that that really deepening our relationship with krishna and i think that that's so beautiful and at the same time we don't give enough like we don't give enough at least i can speak for myself i don't give enough time to that you know it's like i don't really give enough time to, to sitting down and being like krishna what is my relationship with you? Like, what is my actual relationship with you? Let me write to you. Let me chant to you. Let me move away from this, this idea of just like clicking the boxes of my life. Like, check. Okay, I did that. Check. Okay, I did that. Cool. Did my rounds. Wash the plates. Got to bed. Like, whatever, you know? And so now I deserve a little bit of material enjoyment, you know? And it's more of like, I, I've been slowing down a lot, maybe a little too much, listening to my body a little too much, 12, 13 hours of sleep. We've, we've, but gone, over, slowing, we've gone over this. <laughs> we've gone over this. But I've been slowing down a lot and I've been really, really being like, okay, like what, what is this whole thing? You know, like what is my relationship with Krishna? Like how, even, even to the most minute detail, I remember my partner scolding me once. Um, because he was like, you know, if you're offering food to Krishna in this mood of like, I want to eat and I'm, I'm hungry, then he's like, then it's not correct. You know, that's not how you're supposed to do it. And I was like, fine. Okay. <laughs> and ever since then, though, I've been really, really trying to like, be like, okay, even this small, tiny thing, like I'm really, really, really offering this to you. Like I'm really wanting you to enjoy this, right? It's not about me. And I think that those small things that that they seem small but they're not small you know because it's really a shift in perspective of moving myself like you were saying to you out of the center because if it's constantly like no i'm hungry no this is for me no you're supposed to do this role for me no you're you were supposed to hang out with me i moved to new york for you achuta you know we were supposed to go to the movies like what happened <laughs> you know and so i think that the more and more we can we can practice that actually in our spiritual life then it starts to trickle into our material life where I'm not saying that those things are never going to happen again. Like they probably will continue to happen, but I feel like we'll be more equipped to just realize like, oh, I was really thinking that I was the star of the show. Let me move out of here for a second and be like, okay, Achuta, you also have your life. I understand that New Yorkers are busy and maybe this isn't all about me and my desire is to make you my best friend. You know, like maybe I can start doing that. Um, but it's definitely a practice for sure. I, can I say something real quick? I want yeah, to hear yeah, from please. you to, I just, um, there was two thoughts that came to my mind because I was just thinking like, what am I walking away with here? What am I taking? Like, how, am, how is this applying to me? And I was just thinking how, like, I'm actually never going to find what I'm looking for by trying to push myself into the center. I'm actually not going to find what I'm looking for by pushing myself into the center. And so often if it's, 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 I owe it to myself to admit what I'm actually looking for when I try to rope people in. Like I'm upset at Achuta because she wasn't this, that, or the other when I moved to New York. And which by the way, when I moved to New York, Achuta gave very little time to me. And I still remember that. <laughs> um, even though it was Brahmachari, we didn't know each other. Um, but um, it's actually like, rather than saying, I need you to spend time with me, admit I'm looking for connection. I'm feeling a lack of connection in my life. I'm feeling a lack of purpose. I'm feeling bored, you know, and admitting to ourselves that's actually, and it's like, and then it becomes, hey, 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 rather than, hey, you didn't spend time. It's like, hey, Achuta, 
I'm feeling a lack of connection and purpose and I'm feeling bored in my life. And I was really counting on you taking that away from me by spending time with me. And when you didn't, I was just left with my sense of unfulfillment and emptiness. And I'm really upset at you for that. That's a totally different story to tell, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think I've been, I've been trying to, to boil down all those things, both for myself and my other external relationships, but also my relationship with Krishna. Um, and so I've really been trying to get at, you no, know, what's the real desire here? behind the anger behind the whatever and i've done this with family like we've been in complete arguments and and at a certain point i've like turned and said but you know guys the entire reason we're having whatever argument we're having right now is because we love each other and we've either wanted to spend time with each other and we didn't get that so now we're frustrated and so this is all venting out in different ways um or or we were hoping that somebody would want to spend time with us as much as we wanted to spend time with them. And it wasn't working. Um, so, and, and, you know, moving for me, it's been kind of groundbreaking and really valuable, uh, like moving from a space where I was in a relationship, now moving into a space where I'm not. And it's been completely a big shift looking at another person and saying, okay, what, what's behind all this stuff then can we fulfill it is it working or or do we need a new model um and i think looking at those roles in our lives as, as shifting sands as, as things that are not stationary and concrete and just built into this one section we have to do that with our spiritual lives because what happens when you get somebody spiritual even a leader who does not act in the role that now you've decided they should act in what happens to your spiritual life does that crumble and fall because one person over there didn't do what you thought they should be doing or even what shastra says they should be doing when it has no bearing on us and we have a role separate from that then we're able to live spiritual lives that are not so codependent on somebody else living up to some other role hmm. Beautiful. I love that. I think we can just, we can rest there and leave that for today. Um, Kimberly, what do you got for us? Take out what? Take, take out, take out. What's for take out? What are we taking out? What are we taking away? Today we're taking away, um, practice moving ourselves out of the center, save room for grace and divinity to enter the center of our lives. Communicate with others your hopes and expectations and be curious about the deep desire behind a need. Mm, beautiful. Um, thank you, Achita, so much for sharing what you just shared. It, it really resonant. Are there any other um, closing words, thoughts from either of you guys before we finish today? I just want us to remember what Achita just said so that we can pick up from there tomorrow because I feel like there's a lot to unpack from what, what she just said. What is it? What's a sutra or phrase or how are we gonna how are we gonna remember that? Spiritual codependency. Yeah. Spiritual codependency. I also yeah. loved how you said you know, sometimes we're arguing because we, we love each other and being honest, like what we're really looking for for each other. Mm. Hmm. Okay, picking up spiritual codependency tomorrow. Let's dive into it. Everyone's like, Ooh, that's a heavy one. <laughs> Everyone's going to show up tomorrow morning. Like, are we ready? <laughs> I'm still working through my material codependency. I didn't know there was spiritual codependency. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's spreading everywhere. Codependency. <laughs> and so all right love you guys thank you so much be well everybody take care and we'll see you next time bye bye